Welcome to Fan Counters. My name's Nick. And I'm Elizabeth. And today is the big day for all of you Olympic fans. It is the opening ceremonies of the Winter Olympics. Yay! Do you watch any of this stuff? I watch all of this stuff. I don't watch any of it. Oh, I love it. What do you love about it? Well, I like to see who the people are in the, from the different countries and what they choose to wear. Sometimes they have costumes on and sometimes they're just all in their sweatpants. Right. But my thought process behind that is is that we don't watch a lot of sports at my house. We don't watch Sunday football. We don't have to do... Because your husband's the athletic trainer. He gets enough of that. That's right. Sure. So we don't do a lot of sports at our house, which, mm -hmm. thank goodness, is fantastic. <laughs> but, um, but my thought process is, is that those... Green Bay Packers get paid millions of dollars where some of them never even step foot on the on the field. Mm -hmm. And these amateur athletes have worked their tushies off to get to the Olympics. True. And I had a friend who went to the Olympics and I watched the struggle of how he worked really, really hard to get all this stuff done and to, to qualify and to do this. And I really do feel that they deserve your attention you may not like every single sport but certainly you know figure skating speed skating all of those get the high amounts of, of right. viewing downhill mm -hmm. skiing the jump the luge they all kind of get the the fun stuff and of course hockey um is a huge crowd puller right so it's always nice because i think fantastic sports moments are made i think great sportsmanship occurs um, and so I, I just really feel that those those kids, because most of them are, have put in an enormous amount of time and effort to, to do it. The least I can do is, you know, spend an hour watching them do their thing. Cool. Okay. I just, you know, here's my problem, I think. I don't like the cold. Me neither. So I don't want to go outside. Um, we went during Christmas break. We took our five-year-olds uh, tubing down a ski hill, which was awesome. I mean, that was a lot of fun, but it was 12 degrees. Yeah, no. <laughs> so it took a little bit of the fun up, but we were prepared for it. Um, so I'm not sure I have a lot of um, personal interest in the snow. Me neither. I can't stand cold. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll give it a shot for you. But I love the opening ceremonies. Just who who did you get to sing? What did what do you want the whole world to know about your nation? Because that's pretty much what the opening and closing ceremonies are about. Right. And then I always like to know like who they've announced for the next ones and and where we're going. It's it's a little bit strange now that we go opposite summer and winter. Yeah. Whereas when I was a kid, we did the same year. Yes. Um. And so it sometimes you forget that we're coming up to an Olympic year and. I really don't feel that unless you're watching NBC that you really even realize the Olympics start. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I might check it out. I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, just want to remind you to go online and communicate with us on Facebook. You can find our fan group there at facebook.com forward slash fan counters. If you're looking to make sure that you know all of the places you can find the show, now obviously you're already listening, but if you're going to switch your podcasting app, if you go to fancounters.com, you'll see all of the places where you can listen to us. And they're easily laid out there for you. Yeah, nice. And, and don't forget to give us an iTunes rating. We really greatly appreciate that from all of our listeners. Absolutely. And we're always welcoming emails, and you can send those to... Hello at fancounters.com. I always make her do that. Uh, anyway, on the show today, we've waited a long time for this one. Um, reality TV star, it's Deborah Danielson. She's best known as the mother of Fair Abraham from the hit TV series Teen Mom. But she's also a successful business professional working 26 years in the telecommunications industry. And she just launched her own business called Mom and Me Foods, which features wine and Italian condiments. Today, we're going to ask Deborah what it's like to live her life with cameras constantly around her, as well as to hear all the details of her fairy tale wedding that took place this past November. Yeah, she looked great on her wedding. They did it at an aquarium, which is kind of a unique spot, but she's going to tell us why that venue was picked yeah. rather than the more exotic one that she wanted. Yeah. And um, she's also got a new book out. It's called Vapor. You can get it on Amazon. And she's going to tell us about her catfishing story in which she lost a quarter of a million dollars. Unbelievable. Holy cow. I don't know. Yikes. That's a lot of money to lose. 
Yeah. And we're going to find out how that happened on today's show. Coming to you from nowhere near the entertainment capital of the world, this is Fan Counters, the podcast. You're amazing. You need to come to Hollywood. I'm going to make you famous. There was this mob of people, and they're screaming my name. Crazy fans. Stop following me. Don't come around my house. If you do, the cops are going to be at yours. I think this guy wants to fight me. Ended up being a fan. There's just like security guards with like M16 holding like fans back. Are you kidding me? I continually will get stopped. Can I take a picture? We're gonna, oh my God. I definitely declined signing body parts. Oh, I don't want to go there. I'm the only one that's ever been on Sam Jackson and lived to tell about it. <laughs> that's why we call it fan counters. I don't think you're going to last on the air very yeah. long. Joining us now is Deborah Danielson from Teen Mom OG. Welcome to Fan Counters, Deborah. Thank you. Good morning, and I'm so excited. Or I guess it's good afternoon in your world. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Are you traveling right now, or I am. I'm in the DoubleTree Hotel right now in the in the lobby because there were no conference rooms. So oh. I apologize. That's okay. We'll make it work. You might you might have a fan counter while we're talking to you <laughs> we might i mean anything can happen and you know to me to me it usually does happen well our audience knows you best as farah abraham's mom on the hit reality series like i said uh, originally 16 and pregnant she was on but then teen mom and teen mom og so can you take us back let's go back in time a little bit to that moment when farah announced that she was pregnant as a mom, and, and now I'm a dad to twin five-year-olds, I would freak wow. out if my kids were 16 and like, uh, guess what? I mean, <laughs> what was that like? Well, it was kind of hard because I was actually in my office on a conference call with people all over the world in my organization, and I, my phone wasn't on mute. And Farah walked into my office with her friend, and she said, hey, mom, I'm pregnant, and I want to go down to the, you know, family planning clinic and do away with this. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh. And so you were on a, you were on a live conference call. I was on a live conference call. So I had to hurry up, find the mute button while I was breaking out in a sweat. And oh then, <laughs> my gosh. And then try to move forward calmly. Well, we know that she didn't abort, which was great. Right. Um, it is. Sophia seems like just a sweet little girl. Uh, she is my heart. She is so magnificent. How often do you get to see her? Because you're in Omaha, right? And she's. I'm in. I'm in Omaha. I haven't been able to see her since October 20th, and I remember because that was my birthday, and we were together in LA. We were filming for. Let's see. I think we were filming for Teen Mom OG, Teen Mom Two reunion which I think you saw roughly around New Year's or sometime. So whose idea was it to apply to be on Teen Mom? Well, so Farah had just completed her acting and modeling school, and it was the day where she was walking down the runway and doing her great presentation. She did a marvelous job. And so we had to go have a talk with the, you know, the ladies that run that organization, and we said, look, my daughter's pregnant. We just spent all this money for acting and modeling lessons. <laughs> what, how can we, you know, how can we work, right? Mm -hmm. So they went to work and they found um, a casting call for an unnamed show. It was a pilot and totally experimental and no, you know, no guarantees. So I think over 2,000 people applied for this. Wow. And it was quite a process, but we were one of the six that they picked. What do you think made Ferris stand out? Well, I shouldn't have to answer that question. I mean, <laughs> well, I don't know what the tape was like. I don't know what the audition was like. Okay, so I shot the tape. It's the first videotape <laughs> I ever made in my life. I had just won a camera at work, and so we shot a video. But we walked through our house. And, you know, we went room by room, and there was this picture there still hanging in my dining room of Farah and I. And I basically said, with my daughter standing there, I had so many hopes and dreams, and so does Farah. And now I'm worried that she can't ever achieve right. these things because of the burden of an unwanted teen pregnancy. And those kind of thoughts or themes were some of the themes that they were looking to portray on the show and to try to say hey you know it's not good to go out and get pregnant have unplanned yeah. pregnancy so i mean you've obviously seen other reality shows 
So why would you subject your family to this? Well, at that moment, I was a corporate executive and I was building the iPhone network and launching it and doing all this kind of things. I really didn't watch reality TV at that point. And I think at that point, it was mainly the Kardashians and some about Survivor, wasn't it? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And to me, those were fairly safe, decent programs, you know. Um, but I didn't realize it could get so dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They will capture everything. Everything, even things you don't even think about. <laughs> <laughs> um, so cameras arrive day one of filming. How do you get used to everybody being around and crew? And, you know, uh, how long does it take you to feel normal again where you can just have a normal conversation? Two years. Really? Two years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it, was, it was a tough transition because we led a very... Although, you know, I was always in the press and having, you know, open home tours and, you know, running the Olympic torch and all these other kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what, you know, my family's very accustomed to having press a part of our life. It was a different kind of press. They were actually living in your house. They were actually watching you eat dinner, you know, and it was getting right into your psyche and we were not used to that and it makes people paranoid and it makes people question people in their house and their motives and it really messes with your i guess psyche and the way you look at everything and everybody so at this time where are you living when you start sign up for team mom where is your actual home base my home base is in Council Bluffs, Iowa. It's the house that you see on the show. Okay, so that that is where they came to film in Iowa. Yeah, and they we still have we still film there. Now about the editing, I always wonder this: Are you? Because my favorite thing to do on the show actually is to watch when they film at a diner or something. Because there'll be like no food, then there'll be like food, and then it'll be gone, and then it'll be full again. And I'm just like, this is cut so much. <laughs> I it's, know it. It's not even. I know it. So I mean. Uh, you don't have a lot of say in that, obviously. So no. things are cut together to seem more dramatic and that kind of thing. But as a person on the show and this life that they're re-piecing together, I mean, how does that sit with you? Well, sometimes it doesn't sit too well because the camera angles don't make you look too attractive. Yeah. You know, they seem to capture you at your absolute worst moment. And then you know what a lot of people don't realize, behind the scenes, we may be working 10, 12, 14 hours in a day, and it may be like 10 o'clock at night, and we're just going to barely sit down to have dinner. Wow. Well, they wait till you get really tired and hungry, and then they bring up a topic that you really don't even want to talk about. So guess what happens? There's ignition. Mm -hmm. Boom. It's like, you know, the rockets go off. So <laughs> it's kind of... You know, it's kind of like some psychological warfare at times. Wow. I didn't know that. They, I mean, obviously, I guess the producers play a part, but I didn't know that that was part of it is to rile you up or, or bring up things well, that in uh, opportune times. And think about this, too. When we film, like we, we currently filmed in Italy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it takes a lot of people to put on this show. So if we're going to Italy, there's like 15, 20 people that have to go to make this thing work. There's a lot of work with language and getting uh, people lined up and getting locations lined up. Then there's filming. You know, you can't just film with one camera. You have right. to have multiple cameras, two to three. And then you have to have sound people and lighting people. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a production. So when you went to Italy, that was obviously your, you know, the fair and your idea to, to take a trip together before your wedding, right? Right, so, right. But, so the show didn't pick the destination, though. You guys still got to pick, hey, we're going. If you want to film there, then they can choose to come or not. Well, I think, I think they agreed that Italy would be great because our family is from Italy. And all of the products, which they didn't air any of this, but while I was actually over there, I actually went to a grocery store in Positano, Farah and I, and Sophia, and we presented our family, you know, premium Italian hot pepper sauce, mm -hmm. our best damn mustard, our mushrooms, and our wine, and our bottle stoppers, which are my lips. Uh, we did all of that. And, you know, it was good because that's our family heritage and it gave, 
Sophia's sense of where she came from, too. Speaking of Sophia, so we talked a little bit, but Farah has moved many times since the birth of Sophia, mainly <laughs> Florida, uh, Texas, California. Is it hard for you when she's away from you and that you don't get to see her? I mean, do you get to like FaceTime or Skype her or anything? I haven't talked to Sophia since October 20th because Farah is just not allowing that. And that's very, very hard. And I want want everybody to understand that I have raised Sophia and I've been the one that potty trained her and did all this stuff and stayed home and I tell you what it's you know I had her up until she was just about six and wow. you know then they moved and things didn't work out to where I could be there all the time but even if I wasn't there all the time I was there when I would go and visit I would stay with them I would, you know, like the last go around, I was there six solid weeks wow. with them. Wow. So it's really hard when you have somebody so close to you as Sophia is to me and not be able to talk to her or see her. What are some of those experiences that you have had because of the show that you may not have had had you not been on? Oh, I just think they're too numerous to mention. I will say this for people for people who want a job where you get paid to be with your family and you love your family and you love you know facing challenges and sharing that learning experience so other families maybe can benefit it's very good and i liked it you know for all of those aspects i think though if you go on a reality show believing that it's just you know they're going to follow you and you're not going to take direction and you're not going to cover certain topics. You're kidding yourself. <laughs> you know, they, they give us opportunities that we wouldn't otherwise have to be together, to see each other a lot more, to go to a lot of places that we probably wouldn't get to go to. Recently, we had Linda Gray from Dallas on the show and she, um, she wrote a tell-all book and we asked her if she ever regretted putting herself or her life out there on display. So let me ask you the same question. Do you regret putting your life out there for the public to see? I do not because I believe, you know, just like the Bible, and maybe those guys didn't have a, have a say so whether or not their life was out there for everybody to see like Job and, and David. Mm -hmm. But I believe that this is the modern, modern day version of that. And, you know, you may think I'm crazy, but I think that people see our lives, learn from it, and then they do things differently. And that's perfect, you know. And when the fans came to our wedding, they just seemed like part of our family. And I think that's the cool thing, too, because family shares with family. You learn from each other. And so I think that really we're building a better community by sharing our life. You mentioned your wedding and the buildup on Teen Mom has been building up to the wedding with David. And right. the most awkward moment for a lot of us at home was when you went to dinner with Michael and his new fiance to celebrate their engagement. Like that is such a weird thing. Uh, was that something the show wanted you to do or were you like, hey, Michael, we're all here in Italy. Let's, you know, celebrate well, your you engagement. You realize I didn't know that they were going to be there, right? Uh, I may have missed that part, so no. Yeah. So I was told that we were going to Italy, uh -huh. Sarah, Sophia, and I, to try to reconcile and to get on a, in a good place so that everybody could go to the wedding. Okay. I did not know Amy or Michael were going to be there. Had no clue. I had no clue that I would sit two feet away from my ex-husband while he was proposing to another woman, you know. Wow. I mean, <laughs> wow. when you stop and look at the behind the scenes of what went down here, mm -hmm. um, it's just good that I'm a very flexible individual, that's all, you know. And I had no trouble going to dinner, no trouble being with them, no trouble celebrating with them. Um, I just wish that, you know, people would do the same for me. That's all. Yeah. I, you know, it does seem like you and Michael, though, do have an amicable relationship where you don't have a problem being around each other. And no, it, it seems in real life, that's that's the way it is, right? Yeah. You know, before we got married, we worked together for like two years. So 
I mean, you know, when you work together that many years and you're part of the same corporation for like 20 years, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a coworker. I mean, you know, you just, you don't love all your coworkers every moment. Right. Sure I you mean, do, but, right? Because sure. I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know that, you know, you gotta, you gotta make it work and you gotta work through things and, you know, it's just water off a duck's back. I don't hold grudges. I just don't have time or energy for that. The happiest day of your 2017 had to be November 5th when you and David tied the knot at the Omaha Zoo and Aquarium. How did you decide that the aquarium was the perfect spot for your special day? Well, I wanted to get married in Bora Bora on the beach, but MTV good. said, Deborah, you can't do that because that's too far away. And it takes two days to get there and blah, 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 blah. Right? Okay. Okay. So I'm like, oh my God, that's been my dream. So I'm like, okay, where can I go that my mom can come? Because she's 80. And my family, and it not be a burden. So boom, you know, the aquarium is really five miles from our house. It was great for my mom and my family and my friends. And so we got to have all of the, you know, the, uh, the Marines, life, all of the beautiful... It's a great and, backdrop. I mean, you can't believe the creatures in this place. It's amazing. And then we got to, you know, kind of expound on the theme that, you know, David has a very strong Scottish heritage. And, of course, that's a little area right there by the ocean. Mm -hmm. So we had the bagpipers in there. We had the fish, the sea turtles, the mantas. We had it all. You know, it was great. So Fair was there. We've seen the pictures. Sophia right. was not at your wedding? Sophia was not able to come. Wow. So where was she when Fair was there? She was with Michael and Amy at their house. Oh, okay. That is just, uh, that's a weird situation for me. I, I can't figure that out. It hurt. It hurt a lot. But on the other hand, you know, I, I was really glad to see Farrah show up and Farrah be there. Now you have another daughter. Ashley. Ashley. Uh -huh. And so what does she think about all of this being uh, on TV and the arguments and just uh, all of your stuff is out there, you know? I mean, and we don't hear anything from her. So what does she think? Ashley, Ashley's always been very private. So she was on it first with us, but then she decided she didn't like the drama. She didn't like all the exposure. And so she said, you know, mom, I don't want to be part of this. And I said, I respect that and it's fine. So, you know, every child is different. Every person in your family is different. And I think a true loving family accepts that and, and you deal with it. So you will see a lot of Ashley and my mom and other people in my family in my new show as we move forward here. And it's all about being fun and inspiring and positive. Tell us about the show. What's the name? Where can we see it? When? Well, like, right give now, us the dish. right now, the the name we have on it is Deborah D, okay. and we are filming as we speak. Uh, we have been filming for the last seven days, like fourteen hours a day. Holy cow! <laughs> yeah, and you're gonna meet my new partner Oro, and he's a cinematographer, very talented. Um, he lives in Miami. Okay. He just arrived in the United States. He's been living and working in uh, South Korea hmm. and amazing talent. So you'll see him. And then in season two, you're going to see my other partner, Vanessa. And she's also wonderful. She's got a sense of humor that is so great. So you'll see her. And we, I think we have about seven episodes that we just filmed. Okay. Uh, we're hoping to start getting those out we're going to start on youtube we're going to try to move to itunes as well and we'll have those available in those places for viewing it was rumored that amber portwood was going to be in attendance did she come no amber at the time had just you know when she was sick with leah she was very ill i mean when she was pregnant with leah right. i'm sorry no she fine. was very very ill and she just had a really hard time so we had just learned that she was in fact pregnant right and so it wasn't like she was wanting to travel or be around much of anything so that's totally cool with me she we were texting back and forth and i just thought it was wonderful that she wished us all the best and 
gave us her love and her blessing. So that was cool. Great. Awesome. Um, you mentioned fans were at your wedding. Did you invite super fans or are these just people that were at the aquarium that day that were, were like, hey, I know who you are? And No, these were super fans. Yeah. Uh, we had a big drawing. People had to enter the drawing. It was like really suspenseful. We had tons of entries and they were all picked at random. And it really felt like they were all super fans, though. There were 28 fans at the wedding. Wow. And honest to God, some of these people had watched since day one, like you said you did. I did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were just, I don't know, they just felt so in tune. But we had a great time. We danced. We sang together. We rapped together with Deb <laughs> OG. Yeah. <laughs> We were getting down. We had a great time, though. We had a red carpet, so we made time to um, spend time with everyone and take photos, too. Super nice. fun. Now, I Googled a lot of stuff to get ready for this interview to write up uh, what we wanted to know the most. And there are a lot of articles out there, some true, some obviously false, just right. out there to get clicks and links and all this stuff. How much do you pay attention to all the junk that people write about? you guys on the internet i think one of the best things that dr drew ever said like when we first met was to farah and all the girls and the parents was you know there's a lot of social media out there there's a lot of hate you can't let that affect you you can't let that get you down it goes ignore it mm -hmm. so we try to ignore it but there's just sometimes it gets way out of hand and we have to block it delete it report it right and you know there's been quite a bit of that that's had to be you know done but for the most part um i try to ignore people who are just trying to make money off of us uh during the teen mom checkups with dr drew i'm a faithful viewer so i've seen every episode i've seen him talk to all the moms here's the question i have about him and i'm hoping you can at least just give me some insight he seems like he <laughs> brings up these situations to the moms and when he has the exact moment to actually give them some helpful advice or some tough love, he just like doesn't. Uh, is he helpful to you guys? You know, he's getting paid by MTV to be a host and it's a doctor host, but he's not getting paid to be their therapist. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. He's so. not getting paid to be a psychiatrist or a psychoanalyst. And what's really interesting, and I didn't know this until Dr. David told me this, but their their medical degrees, David's and his, are very similar. Hmm. So just like you wouldn't want Dr. David up there psychoanalyzing, <laughs> you yeah. know, um, and Dr. Drew simply just can't do that because he does have his own practice, too. Gotcha. And, okay. you know... I, I would never speak for Dr. Drew. I do admire him. I do think he's given some really excellent advice to the parents and to the girls. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he's been very helpful. But, you know, to expect him to on the spot psychoanalyze and do all of that, I mean, it's just, it, it's an impossible situation. But what he does do is say, I have a connection for you. I have a oh. recommendation for you. And then, you know, it's pretty much up to you to follow through, like with Butch, right? Yeah. You know, he can't sit with Butch and help him with his addictive problem, addiction problem when he's in California and Butch is, you know, in Indiana. True. So to have the most effective therapy, you really need to be consistent and you need to go to somebody close to where you are because it has to be something that you are going to invest your time in right that actually makes sense kind of clears yeah. that up because every time i watch those i have that same thought and but you're right yeah uh, i'm glad you talked me through that so the winter olympics are upon us it's in in this year they're in south korea and so it's only fitting that we ask you about the experience you had in 2002 when the olympics were in salt lake city so tell us about your connection to the games. I had the honor when I worked for Alcatel Lucent of being one of the top performers in the sales organization. So they selected me to have the honor to run the Winter Olympic torch that oh, year. Cool. Yeah, it was very cool actually because I put on my beautiful and I still have all of these. 
I put my beautiful Olympic outfit and I forgot to put on my underwear. Oh, wow. So this little tissue thin paper, because it had been quite a stressful day <laughs> and I was running late. <laughs> and I thought that the jumpsuit that they gave me was insulated, but in fact it was not. Oh and, my goodness. And the only thing you could put on under it because it, of the way it fit was long johns. And I didn't have any. Oh. So I'm out there running with the Olympic torch and I have the one that looks like a big icicle. It's the most beautiful one they've ever had. I'm out there running with the Olympic torch uphill, uphill. <laughs> and it's like below zero outside and no under oh. no thermal underwear on and i was freezing oh, it no. was it was the thrill of a lifetime to be able to have that honor but oh my god and thank god my dad was waiting for me with the van and the heater going right. <laughs> <laughs> because then i was able to go get in the van and like thaw out but i was shaking i was so so cold oh my goodness wow what a story um, I hope you have some other good stories because I want to ask you about your encounters with fans. So living in Omaha and Iowa, much smaller places than L.A. So I would imagine that you get recognized pretty much everywhere you go. And everywhere. So, uh, <laughs> so what's it like to be spotted in public all the time? Are you one of those people where I can't leave the house until I am totally looking like you do right now? You look beautiful. Um, Thank you. Or... Is it like I'm going to throw my hair in a bun and I'm going to put a hat on so I'm not recognized? I go out when I'm here in town, Omaha Council Bluffs. I go out all natural. Okay. I, I, and you know what? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think a lot of people have told me I look better without makeup. I look younger. And I'm like, yeah, that's because you can't see any of the lights. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I do believe in going out and being myself i do try whenever i'm out of town though i'm more aware about la new york more people expect you to be looking glamorous so i try to i try to take that into account and i try to dress appropriately so what other encounters have you maybe had have you had any weird crazy fans approach you or any strange gifts sent to you or what can you tell us about your weirdest fan encounters well i had one lady Oh, there's two. I had one lady write me and write me, I'm making you a quilt. I'm making you a quilt. This is it. Takes a picture of it. And I go, oh, my God, that's incredibly gorgeous. I can't even believe you made something like this. And I said, I'm so honored, but I don't even know if I should accept it because, you know, I would feel, I would just feel guilty because that's obviously a lot of she put a, a lot of work. Yeah and money you know and i'm very cognizant of that so she goes well i i decided not to send it to you because i think you're a fraud <gasps> what yeah and i'm like okay man i'm like the realest thing in the world so she kind of diverted it to whether or not i was a real or a fake and i like i said look you look at my facebook you look at my twitter they're verified accounts yeah and come to find out, she was going to school for criminal justice in Canada. She's a Canadian. And I'm like, you know what, ma'am? You, you take the quilt. Please go donate it to a homeless shelter for women and children. I think they would really love that. And, you know, if you want to put my name on it, that's cool for the donation. Mm -hmm. I don't care. But you know what? I'm the real thing. And I really feel sad. <laughs> <laughs> that you think I'm a fraud. Wow. Right. Then, then the other weird encounter I had was I was down in the jungle in Costa Rica. Now wow. get this, in the jungle, sure. okay, working on my thesis with Whole Foods and that whole deal. And in the middle of the jungle, we're out there walking around, working on this banana plantation. And somebody recognized me. <laughs> I was so excited <laughs> that they came running up and wanted my autograph in the banana plantation. That's amazing. That's You're priceless. like in the middle of nowhere. I know. <laughs> wow. So what do, what do fans do when they come up to you? I mean, they just say, oh, I love your show. I want to take a picture. I mean, they have a lot of questions, you know. 
first of all, they say, we love you. You're so sweet. And you know, that I have a big heart and that touches me. And then they hug me and you know, they go, we wish you were our mom. We wish you could be our grandmother, whatever, yeah. which is really endearing to my heart. I mean, God, how wonderful is that? Right. Yeah. Um, and most people want to know how Farah's doing, how Sophia is, um, you know, things of that nature. But a lot of people do talk about how they relate to the show and they relate to the mom and daughter interaction. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more of that that goes on in our world than maybe we want to admit, you know. Yeah. You know, I think that you and Barbara are obviously my favorite moms to watch. And I don't know if it's because the daughters are not as nice to you as the other families have relationships and whatnot, but you two, maybe it's the, the, the empathy we have, but you guys just, you and Barbara seem so real uh, that, you know, you're relatable. And I think that you probably have more encounters with different fans than other, other of the, the moms of the moms, you know? Yeah, exactly. So I just thought, and I you know, thought Barbara, I should let you know. Barbara is a great person. I really, she makes me laugh. I mean, when she's not stressed out, she's very, very funny. Oh, I she believe is it. She's a hilarious woman. She's funny when she's stressed out. So <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> so um, one encounter that you had that was not with a fan, but a catfish. And I cannot wait to hear this story. I have not yet been able to read the book Vapor, which you re-released in January, but yeah. I am a big fan of the Dr. Phil show and the show Catfish and that kind of thing. And your story really could appear on either show. Uh, so you, you really lost $250,000 to a catfish. I did. So what is the story? Can you, can you tell? But, us? but it's not just a catfish story. And what I, what I really want the readers to to remember is I wrote this book in a different fashion than most people write their books. Okay. Um, it's, it's a lot of text messaging and emails and photographs back and forth. Why did I do that? Not because I couldn't write. I've written a thesis. I know how to write. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I, I wrote it that way because I wanted it to be as real as humanly possible. And I wanted the reader to put themselves in my position and I wanted them to feel what I was feeling. So it didn't hold back. I was pretty honest about everything, you know, including romantic moments. Mm. We'll leave it at that. Okay. But I was really honest about things because I think that's the best learning tool. Um, and this is, this is more than catfishing. It's scamming. It's catfishing. It's international intrigue. It is cultural. I mean, this is a very complicated story. It touches three continents, and it involves the FBI, the CIA, the Secret Service, the Royal Malaysian Police, and the local police here in Omaha Council Bluffs. Wow. So... My hope is I'd like to see a movie made out of it and or a TV show that's kind of a combination between Catfish, which I love on MTV. That, that's mm -hmm. amazing. I love that show. And I'd like to combine it with like the America's Most Wanted. Sure. You know? Now, did because you meet the people? I mean, you met the guy that you were sending money to? No. Ah. I know. Okay. And guess what? Guess what? It's all explained in the book why I would do that. But let me just say this. Okay. For people who think that they're safe, that they somehow are untouchable, that nobody's going to ever pull a scam or a catfish or whatever on them, no. If you're on the Internet in any way, shape, or form, and I don't know how you could not be, even, right. though, you, even though you might not be on social media, all of these banks, all of these stores have records of your accounts, of your transactions. I mean, you would only, you would have to be cash only, number one. Mm -hmm. And even then, if any information has gotten out, and there's been so many breaches in all these systems, you know, but if any anybody that knows how can go in and within one minute to two minutes know all about what you bought at the gas station, what you bought at the grocery store, 
if you're behind on your credit cards, how you doing on your mortgage? Oh, what about those car payments? They know everything. It's all out there. The smart people know how to get it. That's scary. Mm. I don't Very know. scary. Yeah. <laughs> so the book Vapor is available now as a re-release. Is there anything new that was included in the book when it was re-released? Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks for asking. I have put a whole section of photographs in there. It's like my little family photo album highlights. So those are in there. And, you know, I had one person Twitter me the other day. I think it was on Twitter and asked me what kind of photographs were in there. And so I just said, well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> I mean, you know, seriously. Yeah. Family well, photos. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Somebody, he was inferring that there were going to be some yes. erotic. And I'm like, no, that, what, what are you talking yeah. about here? Okay, so if you're into that, it's not in my book. Okay, but, so don't, yeah, don't buy it for that. But <laughs> but uh, there uh, are some excellent family photos in there. And then I did write a new section, bringing everything up to date, like, you know, how I'm doing, what's going on, all of this kind of thing. Dr. David's in there. Yeah. yeah. There are, are some more recent articles online maybe we could touch on if you're comfortable. Um, you've shared how abusive Michael was to you when you were married to him. and. Was what we saw on TV, Michael, on his best behavior? Because I don't know that we really saw a lot of, like, anger from him. Maybe in some of the episodes there was, you know, a, a few fights and that kind of thing. But he seems pretty fair-tempered. Um, so. Thank you. I mean, you, you should go and be a psychiatrist because, yeah, five different psychiatrists that I had, I took him to for counseling um, basically said that he had an anger management problem. And as you know, we went into the, the marriage boot camp, family edition. And, you know, there I found out some additional information, which really helped me understand all his behavior. I can't share that because of HIPAA laws and whatnot. But, but I will say um, to all the fans out there who are in a bad marriage, if somebody's verbally abusive to you, if they are verbally and emotionally abusive to you. That is domestic violence, and you shouldn't put up with that. And you know, there was body shaming that went on. There was, you know, 22 different affairs. I mean, there was stealing, there was lying. I mean, you know, and so many arguments and so much anger and him running off. And, you know, it was just very, very hard to deal with. I just wonder, is it, did that stuff happen only since you guys were on TV or was he doing that stuff before the camera showed up? Day one. Okay. We were married 22 years, I think, 22 and a half years. And it started, I would say it started six weeks into the marriage. Gotcha. I was just curious if it had something to do with, hey, I'm on TV now. People know who I am. And then, you know, women throw themselves at stars and goes from there so i it just, it just all it did was it made it easier for him to you know have access that's all oh man <laughs> so did that marriage boot camp uh did it make things better or worse i mean this it helped me tremendously it to me i had all my questions answered that all of these other phds could not answer because we were in a confined area we were filmed there was no way to bull the doctor mm -hmm. there was no way to come up with oh it's all her fault you know yeah. what i mean yeah <laughs> there was none of that finger pointing going on right but at the end of the day it was a tremendous help to me they gave me a clean just going on the record they gave me a very clean bill of mental health emotional health and what their advice was to me is what you saw you know deborah go out and have a great life go be yourself that's that was the advice for me <laughs> And it took him five minutes to tell me that, but, you know, it was great. <laughs> but, you know, I, I can't speak for Michael, but I do know that there's things that he has to work on, and I'm glad that he's working on them. As part of the Teen Mom series, you had your own special, Being Deborah, where you premiered your first rap song and music video, Deb OZ's. Deb's OG. That's okay. okay. You can continue. I'll Deb's help you. Deb's OG. <laughs> 
A follow-up single, Sugar Mama, also followed. Where does your music pursue stand today? So I am working, like I mentioned before, with uh, Oro, who's my cinematographer, and he is also amazing with music. And I'm connected to um, Maxi, who you're going to meet on the show, who's my vocal teacher. He's in Barcelona. Nice. And he's also, he was also on the show, like, uh, um, what's the show here? I mean, the Voice. Yeah, The Voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was on a show like that. His voice is amazing. He does music videos. And I'm under his tutelage. So between the two, um, they're kind of building my vocal cords up. They're building my range. I now have a three octave range. And you're going to see some very cool music coming out. There's a new trailer out that we put out. Just We released it at the wedding. It's Deborah D. Okay. And it kind of gives you a preview into I'm going to go be me. And it's about, it's about me and my friends. So that's kind of like a precursor or a trailer to what the, mu the new music's going to look and sound like. It'll be kind of like a Beyonce lemonade kind of feel. I can't sing like Beyonce, and I sure don't look <laughs> like Beyonce. But, I mean, I think she's so beautiful and so talented that um, I'm using her for some inspiration. And Sam Smith. Very nice. Now, you do have an entrepreneurial spirit, and uh, you are the president and CEO. Um, I don't want to butcher this name. It's what? what kind, what's the food company? Say Maginé. <laughs> yeah, I oh, would not have gotten we that. We were never going to be close on that. So that's the parent company for your mom and me brand of wine and condiments. And that line started with your Italian pepper sauce. So was that an original creation that you came up with or is that a family recipe? The Italian pepper sauce came from my great grandmother from Sicily and her name was Carmela. And then uh, the other condiments are family recipes handed down. And the wine is made by my magnificent master winemaker in Lacey, Washington. And it is award-winning and was featured at the governor's inaugural ball a year ago. Wow. And everybody, I mean, there were 5,000 people in attendance and it was a huge hit, both the red and the white. Now, do you have more wine coming out? Because I love wine. I think eventually I'm going to have a blush or like a rosé. Right now we have a sexy red blend, which to me is every bit as good as um, duck horn or some of those really higher end wines that you get at the steakhouses. And then we also have a white and wild, which is very light, very refreshing. And I make like mommy pops out of it. I put it in the freezer. <laughs> I put it in the freezer and get it nice and cold. So after I work out, I just take one of those and it just kind of refreshes me, puts a little sugar double back duty. into the body. Nice. <laughs> Great. Now my wife is going to be like, no, I'm just having a mommy pop. Yeah. Four of them. <laughs> what? Just a fast little ice cube. I'm going to pop in my mouth here for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll feel all better. Yep. It'll be fine in a minute. Just give me a second. So what feedback have you gotten from that mom and me line? I've had excellent feedback um, and we're working on some new branding right now. So you're going to start seeing more videos. We're actually shooting some cooking shows uh, where we're cooking with the with the mom and me Italian pepper sauce, and so we're going to do more on food and more on music. You'll see behind the scenes us making music, and we're actually going to go to Barcelona as as one of the shows, and we're going. You're going to see me and Maxi dancing at some nightclubs, and we're going to get up and sing. I know you got this last episode of, of Teen Mom OG. You got to see just a little bit of me lip syncing over there. In. I was disappointed that they put the song over what you were really singing, like the lip syncing, you know. Yeah. Because you were probably I, singing it for real. I was. I was actually singing it. Yeah. So, you know, but it was just the acoustics were not great in there. So it was very difficult to try to, you know, yeah, make sure. it all happen. So I, I get why they did that. But you're going to see us filming over in Barcelona and it's going to be crazy. So now when you're doing all of this, what is David doing? Does he come along for any of this? Does he show up in the new show? David David is with me every step of the way. Um, we're being very selective where we put David in, and it has to fit in with the theme. So last night we went out on an Iowa hog farm, and we met a pet pig. <laughs> 
it is just an amazing story. But David didn't want to go out to the out to the farm because he had the flu and he wanted to oh. just you know go to bed. Yeah. So you're not going to see David in every episode, but he will be a big part of the show. Is he working uh, in Omaha? He does well? not. He is doing um, what they call locum tenums. I have no idea what that means. Okay. But but what it means to me is is that. He fills in for doctors who are sick or going on vacation. So he'll fly to Indiana. He'll fly to Michigan. He'll fly all over. And he'll fill in for infectious disease doctors. Super cool. Nice. Now, you guys like cooking together, right? Oh, yes. That's one of your yeah. passions. Uh, what's your favorite dish to cook? Oh, my gosh. I like Chia Pino. What's that? Chia Pino, I got hooked on it when I was living in Seattle, and a friend of mine took me to this great restaurant, I guess, where Paris Hilton shows up from time to time. Okay. And it's like a it's like a wonderful seafood chowder, only it's in like a tomato sauce. So you'll have whole clams, the shell and all. You'll have um, octopus. You'll have just about clams. Oh, seafood. Uh, I mean, just all anything you can think of you can have a crab leg in there you can have shrimp in there but you know it's a lot of work you gotta like undo it and i don't know it's just that it's kind of like a, a you want to do it with friends it's like a project you okay. know <laughs> yeah my husband won't eat any of that food he says it's way too much work if i have oh, to yeah. work for my food i don't want to eat it but i enjoy that like i like oh crab God. legs and and yeah. peel and eat shrimp and things that I actually have to work for. But no, he won't eat them if, the, if and there's then, and involved. Then, and then we get a loaf of garlic uh, bread and some wine. Boom. It's all done. It's good. Nice. <laughs> what other hobbies do you have that we might not know about you? Well, I'm an avid gardener. Okay. And I have a magnificent garden. And when I'm not, you know working around the clock filming I'm out in the dirt I love to work in the dirt I have exotic plants from all over the world growing in my yard and I love topiaries so I like to shape trees kind of like Edward Scissorhand I guess <laughs> okay <laughs> and then David and I love to travel so I love traveling I love meeting people and we just you know he brews beer uh -oh. he, he makes wine and he just got back. He's a, actually an international beer judge. He just won last weekend two awards, one um, first place and one third place. And I like to drink um, quad, quad beers. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're Belgium quads. Delicious. High calorie, but worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you got to throw in the extra yeah. workouts. I get it. Go. I get it. So Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and we're wondering how you and David will be celebrating that romantic holiday. Uh, we're so excited. So the, the last installation of the, what is it, Fifty Shades in Grey trilogy is coming out on that yes, day. Yes, it is. Okay. And so we are going to go to a Cynodyne, and we're going to enjoy that. And David did something so romantic while he was out of town at the beer judging contest. I love blue champagne, and it's very hard to find, but it's champagne made with blueberries, and oh. so it's exquisite to look at. So he went and bought me a case of blue champagne, put a little mink coat on it, and he said, we're going to have this for Valentine's Day, and I said, thank you. I love it. That so that's what we're gorgeous. doing. Nice. Very fun. So, Deborah, tell us where we can find you on social media. Your wonderful products, your book, Vapor. Where can we get all this stuff? Oh, my goodness. So, if you go to Amazon.com, you're going to see my book there. But if you go to my social media, like Instagram, mm -hmm. you can swipe up. You can see my bio. You can purchase the book. And we're putting up some new links today. I'm going to be on YouNow.com quite oh, awesome. regularly. Okay. like probably four days a week. I will be promoting my book there and I will be doing something that's never been done on younow.com. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm going to do live virtual book signings while we're on the air. Really? So, so you buy the have, book and you can watch you sign it. Is that what the, what that right. is? If you, if you buy it through me, not through Amazon. So okay. I will 
autograph the book and then I also have some vapor t-shirts and I got some new specials coming out on that so you're gonna see Oro is gonna be posting some of these things and you'll be able to more easily buy things um, and then my food is all available at mom and me foods foods with an s dot com and then you can order all of our products there and you'll see the wine you'll see all of that bottle my bottle stoppers which are my lips my mm -hmm. actual lips that have been you know recreated in a bottle stopper did they have to cast your lips they did they made a mold of my lips <laughs> and then my lips look you know it's kind of like a Murano glass but they're about this big and then they're stuck on a steel core with rubber rings going around it so it, it, it's good for wine it's good for anything that's in a bottle like even lemonade or beer or champagne <laughs> but it's right. good <laughs> that's awesome uh, the last thing I want to ask you about before we uh, let you go is there is so much like nastiness online and it can be seen by those who hide behind their computer. They write unfair criticisms about people they don't know. And you're, right. you're active on Twitter, which I think is awesome. And you respond to those people so graciously. And these people are only getting these small glimpses into your life. In fact, right. like we talked about before, they're getting edited glimpses into your life. Right. So I just want you to address those people who write those terrible things. Um, what do you want them to know about what that does to you and your family when they're saying these things that they really can't substantiate? Well, first of all, it's really hurtful. And I'm really tired of hearing about why I caused all the problems of the world. <laughs> I'm really not that powerful. Believe yeah. me. <laughs> if I was, I'd make it a better place instead of a worse place. Amen but, to that. I mean, you, you just logic it out. I mean... Farrah's an adult, Michael's an adult, they make their own choices. Deborah didn't abuse anybody. I gave my children, both of them, every benefit, every advantage. They traveled the world, they had the best things. Um, they got to see presidents being inaugurated. You know, I mean, it's just hard when people think that I caused somebody's grief or sorrow or turned a blind eye to somebody getting, you know, sexually abused. Nothing, nothing, nothing like that happened. And maybe these people had this happen to them in their life or in their world. Mm -hmm. But I would seriously ask them to stop and think, how would you feel if somebody started dissecting you falsely and spreading bad stuff online about you? How would you feel about that? Would you go to bed and feel really good at night? No. You know, yeah, yeah. I actually saw something about uh, all the people who were Facebook or social media shaming, and how it it affects the people that they're doing it because the majority of the time it was a false accusation. Correct. That yep. no matter how many times you go out there and say I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, you know, the whole world believes what they read on the internet, and so yeah. it's very hard to it's very hard to undo something that right. somebody made up or was just misunderstood or right. you know took it a is. small little glimpse of your life and <clears throat> blew it up and and didn't really take the time to ask the questions what was the real reason behind that so we have seen a bunch of that and that it's just not cool and here's and here's where i am here's a news flash for everybody like that just because you say it so what doesn't make it true <laughs> right i mean you know and if you want to be an idiot and believe an idiot boom there you go <laughs> yeah. what do you get yeah. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Yeah. Gotta have something if you want to be with me, baby. Right? <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give my time and effort to nothingness. I mean, that's the way I feel. It's Good amazing for you, Deborah. Thanks so much for this real look into your life. I really appreciate it, and I, I think that you are, whether you know it or not, you do bring strength and insight to those who are struggling with their relationships with their kids, with their parents. Uh, yes, this is putting your life out there, but I think it's, it is for a purpose because we are seeing these interactions and going, Hmm, am I like that? Do I, how do yeah. I talk to my mom? How do I, you know, deal with situations like this? Do I fly off the handle? Uh, it's really, the show does provide you a chance to look inward as well as right. watching what's going on. So thank you not only for being here, but just for being there for 
America to to really take into account what their relationships are like with their their families. And can I talk to my fans for just a moment, please? You bet. I just want to tell all of you, it touches me deeply that you care. And thank you for all your encouragement and your love because there are moments I need that. Well, they are out there supporting you. So, yeah. Uh, so thank you. We are and you so guys are delightful. And nice. I really, really appreciate uh, everything that you've done today. So thank you so much. Well, so. thank you for being with us and taking the time to, to spend a little time with us today. My yeah. pleasure. Thank Have you. a great day. Thanks, you too. You too. Our thanks today to Deborah Danielson for joining us. She was a wealth of information. She was. And really, very sweet. Yeah, very, very nice woman. You can tell how passionate she was about her fans with the emotion in her voice. And we got to see her. You guys obviously can't see her, but we did. And uh, she's very sincere. Yes. She means what she says. I think so. I, I truly think at the heart of her family and her fans are really an important part of who she is. To get the newest updated version of the book Vapor, you can go to Amazon and order it there. Also, her wine and Italian condiments can be found at momandmefoods.com. So go check that out as well. You can find us online by going to fancounters.com or our Facebook page. And you can email us at hello at fancounters.com. If you have a guest in mind that you want to hear on the show, Send us who it is, and we'll see if we can make that happen for you. And don't forget to go to iTunes and give us a fantastic review. Some of you have been doing that, and we really appreciate that. Thank you very much for taking the time to do that. All right, big Valentine's Day coming up this weekend. You got big Valentine's Day plans? Uh, no. No? My husband, much like my birthday and Mother's Day, pretends that Valentine's Day doesn't happen. (laughs) I give the kids little love bugs that usually have a little bit of candy and a note from me. But that's uh, pretty much the extent of the Valentine's at the uh, Allberg house. Have Mark sign the card. Yeah, no. No, come on. (laughs) Uh, us, it's going to be very low key. Uh, my wife is going to New York for some training. She won't even be here. Oh, I get off scot free. Nice. So, what are you doing with the girls? <sighs> we'll see you next week on Fan Counters. <laughs> <laughs>